As a resident in obstetrics and gynecology and this particular delivery the mother of the patient who was delivering said this is such a wonderful 29th birthday for me to be a grandmother and I realized that each person was about 13 or 14 at the time of delivery and that this was something that was happening from one generation and again happening in the next generation I was inspired to start CI3 because I began to see that many of the problems that I was most interested in relating to sexual and reproductive health were really beyond a single discipline. I'm really interested in the continuum of reproduction from birth through the trajectory to adulthood and through to the subsequent birth. We envision the center as a think and do tank and the do part is really key. The center is well positioned to bridge the university community divide. Y'all think Zaria feels real yet? There should be a little piece of everybody's story in Zaria's character. What did you contribute? Because you were really vocal in the beginning. This story, yeah, it's kind of a lot like my life. Melissa Gilliam and I started Game Changer based on the conviction that sex education was failing in this country and has been failing in this country for a long time. And the biggest problem area is youth. Most sex education programs focus on giving kids information. So giving them information about contraceptives, giving them information about STIs. Our project also does that, but we decided that we wanted to think about sexuality in a more networked way. We wanted to think of sexuality as a system that has to do with emotional and social components. So what Game Changer does is invite urban youth from disadvantaged schools to come to workshops where they create digital stories, they create video games, they create transmedia games that have to do with their experience of sexuality. It's like the player gets to decide what happens to Zarya, like either she stays with Malcolm and works it out or she leaves him and goes back home. I see this as a vehicle for letting voices that are often unheard be amplified long term, we see us working locally, nationally, and even globally, and a number of those global partnerships have already begun. As we started evolving a global health initiative, we know that we want to use whatever University of Chicago can do for the world, bring it out there to help in global health. I work on issues of human capital, in particular education and health. We are hoping to develop a project that has to do with maternal mortality in the context of developing countries, and we have been working with CI3 where we're doing that. We want Nigerians, Africans empowered. We want to build the capacity for them to be able to solve the problems in their own country. Okay. If our research is going to be well-founded, we need to involve the community. We need community-informed research. And that's why the center is so exciting. Can we shoot that over? Try not to look at me more, just keep moving forward. When the kids first arrive at workshops and we tell them that they're going to be making a game over the course of a week or two weeks, oftentimes they feel very overwhelmed. Right? I mean, most of them don't have backgrounds creating websites or creating video games. But we really train them to develop these technology skills and also we have them do research on sexuality and reproduction. 
I mean, one of the things I've been impressed with in CI3 is, is really also commitment to translation. So thinking about how some of the research that we're bringing together here could inform potentially, let's say, programs in middle schools on the south side of Chicago. What's really exciting about our partnership at CI3 is that a lot of the ideas that are behind our school and the way that we do school um, are also behind the work that CI3 has been doing in their game changer work. And so we think that it's going to be really engaging, very motivating, um, very different from the sexual ed that we're used to where you kind of cringe and I don't want to talk about this, but more from the perspective of the youth and driven by what they're interested in. So we're excited to be doing this with the team at CI3 and trying this out with middle schoolers. Some of the big problems that we are grappling with is why do minority youth in particular, or disenfranchised populations, why are we seeing these excessive rates of STIs and HIV infections? We are looking at their use of Facebook and other types of social media and to get a better feel for how it plays into sexual decision making. The mission of the university begins with the scholarship and research of our faculty, but it's also about the impact of that research. And this is a center that will have such direct impact on the people of Chicago in a much broader sense. The scientific enterprise in general has moved toward looking for synergies, bringing people together from multiple perspectives, uh, and challenging them to find ways to work together. This issue especially, I think, is ripe for that because it combines a set of medical issues with a set of social issues, with a set of policy issues, where having all the people around the table will no doubt lead to some new insights. This is a unique place. We are a small institution, but we have global aspirations. And the only way we can realize those is to work across disciplines.